Good morning. Welcome to today's daily Bible reading. I'm Pastor Scott. Really excited to be here with you. Uh, if you didn't know, I, I've grown up basically in Rancho Cucamonga my entire life. Uh, we moved from Chicago when I was three years old, so I still love the Cubs, but I'm basically a Rancho kid at heart. And, and I love our city. I love growing up here. I love raising my family here. I love how God has called CBC to, to be a light and an influence in our city. I, I love Rancho Cucamonga. And, and so growing up in the city, I went to high school locally. I went to Etiwanda High School, Ehi, go Eagles, class of 1999, which sounds like it was a really long time ago at this point. Uh, but but I loved I loved my high school. I loved going to school. Uh, well, I loved, I loved certain aspects of going to school. But I loved high school. I, like I reached my peak of popularity. It was a great time for me. Uh, when I was a senior, my parents got me a car. It was like a 1989 Ford Escort. It got me places. It was awesome. And so I'd be driving to school, and often I was running a little bit late trying to get to Mrs. Patterson's AP government econ class first period. And sometimes I would be made even more late because there were sheep, like actual real live sheep crossing the street. So crossing Victoria Street in front of Etiwanda High School, I would be facing sheep. And so I'd just be sitting there and I couldn't go anywhere because there were a bunch of sheep. And then behind the pack of the sheep would come the shepherd just kind of moving the sheep along. And I, those are really like the only sheep I've seen that's the only shepherd I've really seen. So when I would read our passage for today, I'd have that image in my mind of the sheep kind of going in front and the shepherd coming behind. And that image actually influenced how I read today's passage. And if you've been with us this week, we're finishing up our series this week called Here to There, uh, looking how God wants to take us from one place and lead us to another. This week, it's all been about the, the journey from emptiness to satisfaction. And this morning, we're gonna see what Jesus has to say in his own words. Let's start in John chapter 10, beginning in verse one. Jesus speaking says, very truly, I tell you Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep will follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved they will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. So prior to this passage in the chapter before, Jesus heals a man born blind. And this is a great thing. He expresses his power. He makes this guy's life better. But the Pharisees, they're envious. They don't want to lose their power. And, and so they question this man. They refuse to believe and they're worried, right? Because Jesus, Jesus expresses this incredible amount of authority, this incredible amount of power. He, he has a new teaching that the people find fascinating. And he backs up that teaching with all these miracles. And so the Pharisees, they're, they're intimidated by this. They're, they're worried that they'll lose their own power and authority because of Jesus' greater power and authority. And so they're really angry about this, about Jesus doing something good. About Jesus healing a man born light. That's a great thing. But the Pharisees, they can't see beyond their own need to stay in control. And so after that whole situation, Jesus says this to the Pharisees. He says, hey, look, I'm the good shepherd. And that's a name that God uses for himself. He calls himself Israel's shepherd. And God had called priests to shepherd his people, to lead his people, to guide his people in proper worship of him. That's what the Pharisees the religious leaders of the day. That's what they were supposed to be doing. But they had abdicated that responsibility because they were so focused on maintaining control and maintaining power. And so Jesus comes and says, look, I'm the true shepherd. Y'all, you guys are thieves and robbers. You are not true shepherds. You are leading the flock astray. And Jesus says, you know, like my sheep, they, they know more voice. I'm, I'm the good shepherd. I will lead them. I will give them full life. And he says it, John 10, 10, one of my favorite passages. Jesus hasn't come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what thieves do. Jesus has come to give us life and give it to the full. 
And, and so when we're on this journey from emptiness to satisfaction, that's where we find ultimate satisfaction is in Jesus. The full life, the life for which we were created can only be found in Jesus Christ. And that's a challenge, right? Because the whole world around us, everything tells us, have this and you'll be satisfied. Go after this and you'll be happy. Go after this. This is what you really need. And we do that, right? We chase after money or fame or fortune or whatever it is, relationships, success, academics. Success. We chase after these things, but in the end, they cannot satisfy us because Jesus is the only one who can satisfy us. He, he wants to lead us to the full life. And so I read this passage and I get back to that image of the sheep crossing in front of my high school, of the shepherd standing behind them. And so I think through, if, if I'm going to pursue this, this full life, then, then I got to work hard. I got to chase after because the shepherd's behind me. And, and if I veer off course, he, he's going to get mad. If, he's going to hit me and make sure I'm staying on the right track. And so that's the image that I would carry with me. That in order to find the full life, I had to try my hardest. I had to go out as far as I could. And Jesus was only there. The shepherd was only there to hit me if I got too far off course. But that's not how shepherds worked in the time of Jesus. In the time of Jesus, shepherds went in front of their flock. They led their flock. Jesus says it, but it's, it's true that, that shep, the sheep knew their shepherd's voice so well that they would only follow their shepherd. Another shepherd could come say, hey, sheepy, come here. And if that shepherd wasn't the sheep's shepherd, the sheep wouldn't follow him. And, and so Jesus isn't standing behind me saying, hey, you better live the right life. Instead, Jesus is walking in front of me saying, I will lead you to that full life. Know my voice, Jesus says. Follow me, Jesus said, and I will give you a full life. Which puts the question on us. Do we know the voice of our shepherd. How well do we know the voice of Jesus? Amidst all the other voices that are clamoring for our attention and our affection, all the other voices claiming they will satisfy us, do we know the voice of our shepherd? How can you better hear the voice of the shepherd this week, this weekend? Because he's there and he wants to lead us to a life that truly satisfies. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, again, all these emails and videos and readings can be sent to you at findme.com slash Bible reading. And come Monday morning, we'll have a brand new set of Bible readings for our next series called Jesus the King. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday, 9, 15, 11 online or six o'clock in person Sunday night. It'll be a little hot, but it'll be great because we'll worship Jesus together. and It'll be awesome. All right. So listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow him because he wants to give us the best life possible. Have a great, great day. 